Hi and welcome to Physics High and today I want to give you an overview of Module 4 which is part of the New South Wales curriculum in the Preliminary Physics course. And today's topic will be electricity and magnetism. Now before I start, please remember to like, share and subscribe and I would really value your support by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Now this particular topic seems to be two distinct topics. That is one of electricity and one of magnetism. In actual fact, they are two sides of the same coin, but that is actually explored in greater detail in the module six, electromagnetism in the HSC course. And that's why these two topics are placed in this particular module. Now this topic is divided up into three key inquiry questions. The first two deals with the idea of electricity and the last one deals with magnetism. And the first inquiry question asks, how do charge objects interact with other charge objects and neutral objects. Now, in essence, this is often referred to as the concept of electrostatics, and so that's what I'll call it. The second inquiry question now deals with what we often refer to as circuit electricity. And so the question in this case asks, how do the processes of the transfer and transformation of energy occur in electrical circuits? And so, as I stated, I'm gonna call it electrical circuits. And the last one, of course, is on magnetism. And the inquiry question in this case states, how do magnetized and magnetic objects interact? Now, when we want to look at charge, we really want to break this down into four key areas. The first is simply describing them. I then want to have a look at understanding the nature of fields. And now we're in a position to talk about how they behave in respect to each other and also within fields. And then lastly, we want to tie in with the concept of voltage. Now, when we're describing charges, we generally use one of two names. You probably already know where I'm going with this. And of course, it is the idea of something either being positive or negative. And of course, the alternative left over is it's neutral. Now, the reason why the call positive and negative is a matter of history and I'll get you to look that up how those terms came about. The reason behind the idea of a charge is that protons are positive and electrons are negative in our simplified model of the atom. And in essence when we have a material that is neutral we have equal numbers of charges and as a result of causing it to become charged by let's say rubbing a cloth across it or something to that effect, we are redistributing the charge. We are maybe moving negative charges to one area, leaving the other area slightly positive in charge. And of course the new area is negative charge. And that concept really ties in with the whole idea of the conservation of charge. We're not creating or destroying negative or positive charges, we're simply redistributing them. So with the exception of talking about our electron uh, and our proton, so to speak, in essence, electrostatics is a funny word because in order to charge an object, we actually have to move them from point A to point B. And so there's really an aspect that's not static right there. And now we're moving to a very important concept in physics, the idea of fields. Now, you're probably already familiar with a couple of fields already. The idea of a magnetic field around a bar magnet, which we discuss in the topic of magnetism. And of course, we're standing in a gravitational field, force, so to speak, of gravity pulling us down because we're in a gravitational field. So a field really is a region of space that experiences a force due to its some sort of property. And so in our case, we're dealing with an electric field, which we use the symbol E. The definition for the electric field is to say, well, how much force is a charge within that field going to be experiencing a force per unit charge? And so automatically we have a unit for the electric field strength, which is newtons per coulomb. Now, the way we represent electric fields is by the way, by the use of arrows. And you're probably already familiar with them. We can talk about a year field around a positive charge a field around a negative charge, and then a special case where you then have an interaction between a positive plate and a negative plate, and you end up getting what we call a uniform electric field. And so what these lines represent is the direction 
of force that a positive test charge will experience in those fields. And the separation of our arrows represents the strength. So the, here the field strength is getting weaker as we radiate out. And because these lines are here parallel, we say that the field is uniform. That is the force that is experiencing by a charge in that field remains constant. Now that actually nicely ties in with how charges behave. And it's safe to say, of course, that if I have a charge over here that is, let's say, positively charged, it has a field. And if I put another charge in there, it's going to experience a force because it is in the field of the other charge. And so now we have a concept of the fact that two charges will either attract if they're opposite in charge or repel if they are like charges. And that leads us to the concept of Coulomb's law. And Coulomb's law simply says that the force between any two charges is proportional to the product of the charges and indirectly proportional to the distance between them squared. And so now we can talk about two charges that they will repel and attract and they will behave differently. But it ties in the fact that also we can talk about it, the fact that they are in an electric field. And so a charge will experience a force in an electric field and the force will be obviously determined by the strength of the electric field and of course its charge. And then because we now want to talk about the fact that there's a force there, there's a natural progression of talking about the charge's behavior. Because if we have a force acting on a charge, well that means it leads to an acceleration. Now if there's an acceleration, well that leads to a change in velocity. And if there's a change in velocity, then what we end up getting is a change in its energy. Now that energy can be one of two ways. And that energy could be the result of the force pushing it away, speeding it up, and so we end up getting a kinetic energy. But if we apply a force against it, that is we do work on the charge and move it a certain distance, then we're going to change its potential energy. And that segues really nicely in terms of voltage. Now voltage is simply saying, well, how much work am I doing per unit charge? So what we're saying here is, is that if we do work on it, then we are changing its voltage as long as we know how much charge I am actually doing the work on. So if I have a positive test charge and I move it towards the charge over here, what happens there is I am obviously doing work on it because I'm overcoming the force that it's naturally experiencing. I'm doing work on it. And so I'm changing its potential energy, but per unit charge, I am actually increasing its potential or changing its potential. If I let it go though, then it obviously happens, it moves away. And as a result, it's increasing in its speed, it's increasing kinetic energy. And so the field is doing the work. And so now I have changes in kinetic energy. So that's the term in terms of voltage. Now work, of course, is force times displacement. We have a term force here. So you end up getting actually a mathematical relationship between the electric field and the voltage. And that becomes E, the electric field now becomes the voltage per distance. And so now here we have is another unit we could use for the electric field strength, and that becomes the volts per meter. And so that rounds up our understanding of electrostatics. Well, I hope that has helped you understand electricity and magnetism. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And please put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And remember, if you'd like to support the work that I do, maybe buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.